Nadine Tunsell. Yes, it's familiar. Yeah, she's a solo, you know. We are live. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're live now. <laughs> it must be Tuesday. Healthcare <laughs> in Hawaii, right? I'm Jay Fidel in the Think Tech series, and with me is uh, Dr. Heiwan Jun. She's uh, internal and uh, pediatrics at Kaiser, uh, Kaiser Permanente. Hi, Heiwan. Hi, thank you for having me. You don't mind if I don't call you doctor. It always thrills me to call <laughs> doctors by their first names. <laughs> if it thrills you, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, let's get a handle on um, you know, what, what it is for you at Kaiser. So you, you went to UCLA undergraduate, and mm -hmm. then you went to UH uh, Japsom uh, for uh, medical school, yeah. and uh, then, you, then you went straight to Kaiser? Oh, we have to do residency. Yeah. So I did residency at Yale, New Haven. Okay. And then after... Yale, where do I know that name? <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and then I thought, wow, this is almost as beautiful as Hawaii. And that last winter had a nor'easter, and we were shoveling our cars out with pizza boxes and said, we need to go home. <laughs> so moved back and joined Kaiser. Pizza busters? Pizza boxes. We oh, didn't okay. have shovels. <laughs> Well, you know, that's really something because in New Haven they have wonderful pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was delicious. After, before we started to. <laughs> and after too, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, then, then you came to Kaiser. Now, and, and how long have you been at Kaiser? 11 years. Oh, that's a long time. Or it's a long time beginning, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, Kaiser, I mean, I tell you, we made a movie about Kaiser maybe two years ago with Laura Lott over here in PR. And, um, and we went around on the weekend and we looked at all the uh, operating rooms that were really interesting and fabulous and very high tech. And I got the impression, even at that time, uh, you know, that Kaiser is very into tech. So you're here to talk about tech, right? Well, I want to talk about innovation. Okay, yeah. innovation. Innovation. Better yet, it's yeah. a broader term. Well, you know, I, I, I love Kaiser because to me, a uh, big part of our foundation, our DNA, is innovation. And so I kind of wanted to start with a little history because I find it please. really fascinating. So um, if you're ready to travel with me, okay. we're going we're gonna to go back in time. We're talking about Henry J. Further. Further, okay. Well, the other half. <laughs> okay, the, per um, the Permanente half. The, exactly, the Permanente <laughs> half. So I think when a lot of us hear Kaiser Permanente, we just think Henry Kaiser, right? And you're right, Permanente is Garfield, Dr. Sidney Garfield. And I wanted you to go back with me to the 1930s, actually. And so Dr. Garfield is a brilliant surgeon. He finishes USC, and he's, you know, he's going to go put his shingle out. And he decides, of all places, the Mojave Desert, right? And so he's going to help the aqueduct construction workers. And he has this grand idea, and even back then, he tries to use what technology he has. He has air conditioning, right? 1930s, Mojave Desert air conditioning, right? Can you imagine? So he um, creates a system, but it's difficult, right, with the payments. And so uh, at one point, he has to hold off repo men at gunpoint from taking his last ambulance. And he said, there's <laughs> got to be a better way, right? There's got to be a better way to provide wow. care. That's a great story. <laughs> right? So um, he gets approached by the company and says, what about prepayment? Why don't we prepay you? And he said, great. You know, what about prepayment from the employees, the construction workers? And so right there, he creates innovation, right? He starts the first prepayment system, and that really paves the way for prevention. Because back it then... It didn't exist. Right. In the 30s, right, you only went to the doctor when you were dying, literally. Isn't that true? Right? Yeah. People had babies at home. Yes. They weren't going to the doctor to have a baby, right? Yeah, and you went to the doctor in your neighborhood. You know, yeah. it wasn't, you didn't go to the hospital. That was... That was for dying, but the ordinary physician, he was down the block and he was one person. Yeah. So right there is prevent, it's prepayment and prevention, right? Um, and then it's, uh, um, Garfield then kind of um, says, you know, he creates actually two diff three different general hospitals out there and he sets his, site, his sights back at USC. And once he gets to USC, he sees um, economies of scale. And in there is innovation, because it's not, it's not the traditional economies of scale, like being in the hospital. How do you actually integrate and work together, right? Multi-specialty, um, different 
medical services, ancillary, so your lab, your x-ray, how do you work together, integrate it, which is very different than the traditional, you know, um, I do this and you do that. So mm -hmm. he started right there to also look at integration. That was way before his time. Way before. He was actually recruited by Edgar Kaiser, the son, and Kaiser was also pretty innovative because he didn't have to worry about providing health care. But, but Kaiser family, even back then, recognized the importance of investing in their employees because that produces better results, right? And so did, had no financial incentive to do this, but recruited um, Garfield to establish a health system up at the Cooley Dam, at the Grand Cooley Dam. And that's where it started? That was the first? Well, kind of. <laughs> there, he toyed with the idea of the prevention, right? Providing integrated care for the family. And you wonder, well, is there any value to that? And I think that's where you saw the value. People weren't dying from pneumonia. They weren't dying from appendicitis, right? The community couldn't participate, but they actually wanted to join because they saw the benefits. So I think from there it was prevention, right? Prepayment prevention, the economies of scale using integrated systems because he came up with a group of um, doctors and nurses. And then the last thing that happened was, of course, World War II and with Henry Kaiser and the shipyards. He needed someone to create a medical system for all of the shipyard workers. And so in the 60s, he created a computerized system with multi-phasic testing. If you can imagine on the docks having different stations that the shipyard workers would go through, for different tests. It's the same thing. On the docks, right? Well, but he was taking the same kind of workflow, you know, yes. technology from shipyard building, shipbuilding, and, and putting it to medicine. Exactly. As yeah. I, I mean, it was an easy transition, I exactly. think. Exactly. And so, you know, those concepts are really important, that integration of care, that prepayment with prevention at the core, and then um, really using technology, computers, whatever it is, to improve that quality of care and do it in a cost-effective way. Way ahead of his time, really. Very Generations ahead. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and even now, I think a large part of the medical community is still recognizing yeah. this. Uh, and then the way we see it today, it, you know, a big way we see it today is with um, kp.org, which is more the consumer-facing side, right? And within it, a part of that is my health manager, where patients have access to their medical records. On the web. On the web. And then we have the electronic medical record on the provider side that also helps. So all of the concepts I talked about get integrated now online for care. This is so important. You know, I, you know we live in a, in a world of technology. We live in a world of the web. You want to find out any, anything, really. You, you go on Google. It doesn't take long. You know, as a kid, we used to have the thing in, in New York. It was called the New York Times Information Service. Oh. And I don't think it was 24 by 7, but it was a lot of the day. They were available. Uh -huh. And these guys were information, you know, dweebs. Okay. And you could call them Lackawanna 4 1000, by the really? way. It was a number. I remember it because uh -huh. I called it so often. <laughs> and you ask them any question, you know. Uh -huh. and, and, the, and Google is like yeah. the, the, the successor to all of that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for a long time, you know, when the web came around in, what, 1995 or so, for a long time we had all this developing. What was not happening was medical records, medical information. And little by little it did develop. I think you guys were way ahead. And, um, you know, now, now, just this year to me it seems, like we're, we're blossoming. You know, the flower, she is blooming. Uh, but I think you bloomed before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kai, I, I, I really believe that with the foundation of innovation at, at our core, we're looking at ways every day to try and improve this. Yeah. Well, I want that. I mean, um, as a patient, I want that. Mm -hmm. I want to I be able to sign those forms, you know, those forms everybody loves. I want to do them on, on, in, in my skivvies at home. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to have to stand up. Yeah. And then I want I want to I want to uh, you know uh, make 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 appointments mm -hmm. you know yes in my skivvy you said home <laughs> I don't want I don't want to have to get on the phone and wait and exchange telephone calls and I want to I want to you know sort of tell the doctor my situation um, you know uh, the same way yeah and I think that's the power of 
my health manager a small part or a, a big part of my uh, kp.org is my health manager where you could do that. I, I find it so comforting when, you know, in the middle of the night I think of a question and I could just email even my kids doctors. Of course, you know, I, he's my colleague, but, you know, in the middle of the night when you're running through the things in your head that you have to do, it's really nice to be able to send that email or to schedule the physical I forgot to do because I got too busy. Now what's interesting is that HMA, HMSA started a program like this, and it must be three, four years ago, maybe five, uh, an Israeli guy. Hmm. I mean, he went to good schools mm -hmm. in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, but he was Israeli by birth, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he, did, you know, uh, designed this whole affair where you could talk to a doctor. Oh, Wouldn't wow. be your doctor necessarily, but a doctor okay. on the web. You can see a picture of your doctor and have a conversation and ask him questions and, and so forth, and he, you know, and you get answers. Um, didn't work. Didn't work. For some reason, it just went flat. I think in large part, this is an interesting comparison, in large part because um, the doctors didn't like it much. Mm. But when you have kp.org, the doctors by definition like it because it's all one community. Well, and you have a different philosophy and it's, it, you know, it adapts perfectly to what HMSA was trying to do with a non-integrated community. See? So you succeed yeah. them and maybe you do it the way they might have done it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been around, um, we started it in 2005, and so it's, Same time. Yeah, it's been going around for a while. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure about that program, but what I really appreciate is that when I do get that email, I have access to all of their health record in front of me, so it's not really a separate system. So I feel very comfortable answering the questions with all the information I have in front of me, and even if I can't answer the question, I think what I love about KP is that I can ask the specialist. <laughs> you know, uh, we have ways to communicate. We have so many ways to communicate, actually. Um, uh, what are the ways? So I, I could do it by chart review, asking them to, hey, can you just take a look at this? I could call them. I could page them. I could instant message them. They're right down the hall. And, well, and not all always, all but, but instant message, it's well, better than answer. down the hall. I don't well, true, have to true. put in any steps. Mm -hmm. I should probably put in more steps. But it's really wonderful that I, may, I feel I have a whole team behind me to help me with my patients, that I'm not just out there on my own. But the other thing is your patient is with you. Right. In other words, the conversation includes your patient. That's what I really like yeah. about this. It's uh, a little tricky with email, but yes, well, <laughs> when they're in front email's of me. Email's the old fashioned yeah. time, really. You know? <laughs> yeah, but we are exploring video visits. Um, so I hope that that's a technology we'll be able to leverage. And I think that's really important to us at KP because we are very committed to providing care equally in all the islands. So whether you live on the Big Island or Maui or Oahu, you should get the same quality care. Yeah, so but technology can help exactly, you do that. Exactly. They talk about the doctor shortage, you know, exactly. Senator Green talks about it all yeah. the time. But the fact is that we can ameliorate the doctor shortage by using Skype. Mm -hmm. and some of the other tools mm -hmm. you'll be talking about. Yeah. But for the moment, we're going to take a short break. Okay. We're going to come back. We're going to come back roaring with more information <laughs> okay. about what Kaiser is doing. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Haewon Jun. Uh, she's an in internist and pediatrics doctor at Kaiser Permanente. Where's your office? Mapuna Puna. Mapuna Puna, where God lives. Yeah. This is Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. We're part of the Think Tech series. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on the Think Tech Digital Series. The show is every Wednesday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and I want you to watch this show because I think that when we talk with artists on the show about what they do, how they do it, and most importantly, why they do it, I believe that it resonates within each of us and we find something inside of ourselves that brings us closer to all of humanity. That's what arts are there to do, and that's what I'm here to do on this show. That's Center Stage. It's on every Wednesday from 2 to 3 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here in the downtown, the core of downtown in Pioneer Plaza, uh, and at the Think Tech Studios, which you should come and see sometime. It's down at Suite 30 at the bottom of the, uh, it's in the lower level of Pioneer Plaza, 
And you can watch our shows live if you want. It's really interesting. Anyway, we have uh, Dr. Haewon Jun here. Uh, she's a doctor at Kaiser, telling us about Kaiser, the history of it, and how it got the way it is today. And um, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, continue that discussion with you, hey, because um, you know we have followed this for years. Think Tech has followed this. We, I mean, we had shows about this even before 2005. We we talked to doctors who carried little pre pre cell phone mm. devices right. with with the entire Merck manual on their belt, you know. And the Palm Pilot. Yes, I exactly. Had one. <laughs> yeah, you had one. I had one. <laughs> Uh, now I don't think they need it anymore. You use the phone instead. But anyway, uh, so it's a conversation. I see what you were saying. It's a conversation, whether it's by email or any other method of communication. And you're bringing a lot of people into the conversation, and it becomes a brain trust. And you know that way you get the best medicine, the best thinking, best analysis you can possibly get. And uh, and the patient, the really important thing is the patient is drawn into it. Um, I remember, you know, in fact, I can tell you that a lot of professionals. Uh, they go, they open a file on a matter, um, you know, name it, name it. Any kind of job where you're responsible mm -hmm. for something, you open a file, you keep your records, mm -hmm. you look at the file, you advance mm -hmm. the cause. Mm -hmm. And people don't do that, mm -hmm. haven't customarily done that with their own health, which is, you know, the biggest project of all, if you will, <laughs> keeps you alive. Oh, yeah. Now, whether you're healthy or not, mm -hmm. it's worth, you know, having a, keeping a bead on what you're doing, how you're going. And you, as I was saying before the show, I mean, everybody is unique. It's a unique uh, organism. And talk to any scientist out of the university, and that's what you will get. Every organism is unique. The DNA is unique. The person is unique. And the problems are, the combination of problems are unique. So this conversation is really important. And you're beefing up the conversation. You, you're, you, know, you have other specialists and people you can talk to. But here's the thing. You're using, uh, what do you call it, sensor type technology like a camera, mm -hmm. like a camera. Mm -hmm. What did you call it? The selfie. Teloderm. Oh, teledermatology. Uh, I really yeah. like that. How does it work? Yeah, so teledermatology is uh, very exciting for our region. You know, um, especially in Hawaii, we have such a huge rate of skin cancers, and uh, um, we have limited dermatologists here in the state. The teledermatology, what it allows us is, as a primary care doctor, if I have concerns about what I see in the office, we can actually take a picture using, we use iPad minis with a special camera attachment, and we're able to load it onto their health record and send that consult to dermatology. And what I really love about this is because it helps us to understand how quickly or not so quickly someone needs to be seen. So that person with melanoma can be taken care of the next day versus someone with a rash they could recommend treatment, and it could come later. So they can really help facilitate the very urgent cases to be taken care of quickly. We had one member who had a skin lesion on the toe, actually, and um, it ended up to be pretty concerning. Within two weeks, they, using the teledermatology, they were able to get a diagnosis uh, and surgery. Two weeks, that's, that's to me, Chicken it's, skin. It's, really it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable, yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you have uh, some kind of cancerous lesion, melanoma, you, it's melanoma very scary. every day, every hour yeah. counts. Yeah, now, I know so. two people who have lost family members to melanoma on the feet. And so, you know, Which, I, and I you just, don't even realize that you don't think no. your foot is going to be a melanoma. Well, you don't even look, melanoma. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't yeah. really look over there. So. Well, it, it goes to show the camera is really important. It's, dermatology is, I, I don't want to say easy, but it's it's external, you can mm. look at it, mm. and you can mm -hmm. use a camera like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, you know, it's, there's no excuse for not looking at mm. your own body. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Hard on the back. <laughs> uh, except on the back, yeah. So, you, but you have to have a high resolution camera. Very, You talked yeah. about an attachment for yes. the, the It's the a iPad. special attachment, yes. How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually quite easy. Uh, it, there's a little um, attachment that's already uh, available, and we just slip it on. So you know you're getting high resolution. Oh, yeah, because you know it's, it's direct contact on the skin, actually. Oh, so it's specially like a meant. microscope almost. It's specially meant, yeah, exactly, yeah, for skin yeah. lesions. Yeah. Oh. We do have to remove it for, like, more rashes and body yeah. kind of pictures. Have to clean it off afterwards. Uh, alcohol? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we use alcohol on every, every time we use it. We use, clean it. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm a patient, though, I can do this anywhere in the islands, anywhere in the world. 
I could be traveling in Milwaukee, for example. So that's different. So teledermatology is in the office. Okay, but okay. yes, we also are now able to have patients email attachments, whether it's a picture or a PDF. So, you know, I get a, often patients who go to Korea and they get full medical exams, for example. And sometimes there's a little bit of a delay in getting the reports, so I could kind of correlate that with their medical history and give them my recommendations. But mm -hmm. we, I just had a couple return, and they attached it as PDFs. It's a part of their medical record, so I don't even have to have it scanned or anything. I'm able to look at it with the medical records I have on them and be able to give them advice very quickly. So it's, it's pretty, um, to me, unbelievable how you can really integrate all different parts of how people get care and, and give the best advice you can so they could stay healthy. Now there was a time, uh, I don't know about KP, but there was a time when doctors resisted electronic medical records where they didn't want to do it. That it was that and they a lot of them felt that it didn't it was stood between them and the patient mm -hmm. and uh, some doctors I know today there's a screen between you and the patient and they're typing madly into the computer to make the record while you while they're, and of course that stands in the way so some doctors you know they objected to uh, the introduction of electronic medical records because they thought it was in between but it sounds to me like Kaiser is very comfortable with electronic medical records and you specifically Hewan you are comfortable with electronic medical records? You know, it's to me, it's a tool like my stethoscope, and so I can leverage it as um, productively as I can. You know, I'm still learning from it, like I do with my stethoscope, and so um, it, it's just a, a different scale, you know? And so we have been on this journey 10 years, so the it is definitely a learning curve, and I know that um, there are many providers in Hawaii who are still um, about to take that leap. And it, it's, it's hard. It's a, it is a change. What's hard about it? Well, you know, it's, um, it is a, almost another person in the room, right, if that's your focus and not the patient. And so how do you use this technology to be productive and not intrusive yeah. to the visit? But when you're done, you're happy because now you have a record that's easy to read. You don't have to look at chicken scratch. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, yeah, that's huge. <laughs> they say that doctors have indecipherable handwriting. You know, it goes way, way back to the 17th century. Or something. <laughs> yeah, and I think, it, you know, it just comes with the, you know, trying to get things done timely, right? You yeah. start to get messy. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, it's a portable medical record on both sides oh, for the you patient can do it anywhere and for me yes yeah and then the patient and tell me if this is true <clears throat> the patient has <clears throat> the benefit of what you put down yes in other words whatever you are is this true whatever you're writing whatever is there in that chart whatever records files x-rays reports what have you the patient can see that so um, they can't see all of the visit notes yet but they have access to the after-visit summaries. They have all their test results available to them, including x-rays mm -hmm. and then the medication refills. Mm -hmm. So how does this change the world of second opinion? It must, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, I say, well, you know, I, I agree with what that doctor said, but I'd like some confirmation of it with another doctor who is my cousin's uncle's okay. aunt's nephew yeah. down the block. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I want to get, you know, that confirmation. But I don't want to offend my yeah. doctor. You know, I want my doctor to love me <laughs> as much as she possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x-ray, mm. which is mm -hmm. attached to the mm -hmm. record, and I'm going to send it mm -hmm. to my cousin's aunt's uncle nephew yeah. and, <laughs> and see what he thinks. Is this yeah, what happens? I, 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 yes, I guess it could. I, I didn't think about that scenario, but definitely. you you Because it's your record, we ask that they protect it as in the way you would exactly but if they're open to sharing and having um, their family members give input I mean that's wonderful because it really helps to get the right decision for whatever treatment we're trying to work on so when I when we talking before the show I said you know if you spend all this time as a professional or in a, you know a manager uh, keeping files on all your mm -hmm. projects uh, why not keep a file on your own health that's a project mm -hmm. And you said, well, we already do that. We do yeah. that here. And 
you know, you have a file with us, and you can come look at it at 3 in the morning if you want. Um, and so we, we do the filing for you, and you get the same or better benefit because you know the file is complete. Yeah. And so are people doing that? I mean, are they actually coming in? I, I don't mean 3 o'clock in the yeah. morning, but are they coming in and looking? Are they, oh, are yeah. they, is this making them more, more participatory in their own health? Definitely more engaged. I, um, I had someone just email me the other day, and I guess she spent some time kind of looking at every test. And so I loved it because she said, oh, doc, hey, I noticed this and this. And it was wonderful because we could have a conversation about it. It was normal. But, you know, I think what I loved about it was that she was really starting to want to find out more. And, and she was ready, you know, because I've known her for years. And, and there were other things in life that got in the way. But finally, she's ready. She's ready to kind of look at some things in her health. And she was able to reach out to me this way. And I thought, oh, how wonderful, you know. And would it, I don't know how it would have worked if she had to schedule an office visit, right? Or, um, or she couldn't even really have access to her lab in the have past happened. days. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, just, I just love that the opportunity it provides when the patient's ready. Well, it's just as a matter of hum humanity, and, and I actually think that um, humanity is really at the core of everything. And that we are mammals. Yes. We have our strengths and yes. we have our mammalian failures yes. just as well. Oh, yes. And our best thinking is collaborative thinking. Yes. Our best thinking is yes. when we share the, yeah. the problem and share the solution. And so, I, I mean, the, just the likelihood of success, the likelihood of the best outcome is, is when you have a number of people collaborating. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens when the patient is looking at the records and mm -hmm. sharing the files, you have a, a level of collaboration that, that maybe not all the time, but enough of the time you care, is going to lead to a better outcome because the yeah, thinking is more exactly collaborative. exactly right, yeah. And I, I think um, what you emphasize is really important because it, it is about the relationship and then leveraging the technology to enhance that, right? And so, um, you know, that collaboration, you know, it's at so many levels at Kaiser, which I really appreciate too. You know, I mentioned earlier, I feel like I have a team of specialists kind of behind me that I could go to. But it's not even that. It's the collaboration um, among different ancillaries, right? B being able to consult with our um, pathologists and our lab technicians and our diagnostic imaging partners and pharmacies, uh, pharmacists. It's really um, that collaboration is so valuable. It's, you know, it's like it could be a great ad, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a picture of you and okay. behind you are these figures, lots of figures. Okay. You know, I'm not alone. And it was I think, 50 people behind I think you. there is a commercial oh, like okay. that, yeah. <laughs> and then with like a computer, a digital image picture, I think. Yeah, yeah. It must have left yeah. an impression on me. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, on that note, we're going to take another break. Uh, that's uh, Hewan Jun. Uh, she's an internal doctor, in, internist doctor, and pediatrician at Kaiser. Uh, this is Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we'll be right back. Trust me on that. Hi, my name is Sachiko Slomov. I'm the floor manager of ThinkTech Hawaii here. Uh, you can join us on the air every weekday from 1 to 5 or off the air at thinktechhawaii.com. We stream all of our videos and all of our amazing, like, amazing shows <laughs> at thinktechhawaii.com or on our Ustream channel. You can also check us out on Twitter at ThinkTechHI or Instagram at ThinkTechHI also. I'll be listening, and I hope to see you there. Thanks. Okay, we're here with Kaiser Permanente, kp.org, Dr. Haywan Jun, who is an internist and pediatrician there at Mapunapuna, uh, here in Healthcare Hawaii. And uh, I'm Jay Fidel, and I have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I come, I, 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 I I have a problem with my Sorch. With your? Sorch. That's a, a mythical okay. organ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you give me such a problem. So I write an email to you. Yeah. And you say, gee, that sounds like you need to go to see a Zorchologist. How does that work now? Do I go direct to the Zorchologist? Do you want to talk to me first? Some sorchology problems you can go <laughs> directly but most of them I can help with kind of figure out how quickly how you know uh, if we should try some other things ahead of time so I would love to see you for that scorch problem first 
and what's really nice is that you could schedule the visit online. So, uh, I mean, of course, the email's fine, or you could call me to talk about it first. I can call you? Yeah. yeah so yeah. if I go look you up in, in uh, Google or kp.org, I can find your phone and actually call you? Well, it's not directly to my office because... Okay. Uh, okay, but I'll get you, though. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, they actually put it on my um, schedule for the day, so I don't miss any. Ah, yeah. so the call goes on the schedule. They, yeah, they want to be sure I take care of it before. So it's a, it's a telephone appointment. Yes, a telephone That's appointment. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's almost religiously beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yes, you could schedule the visit online if you think it's something I should look at, or if it's something we should talk in person. Because sometimes yeah. it's you so much. You may want to look at my zorch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or palpate my zorch. Yes. Wherever it may be. Wherever it may be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. All right, so now the, uh, the good news is that in Kaiser, the zoologist would be down the hall, too. He's part of that uh, eminence gris, which is French for, you know, the, the group of gray people in the, in the ad, right? Yeah. Part of that group. So, um, it, you know, we do have um, 19 different clinics, uh, some, somewhere around there. And so they may be at one clinic. At Mapunapuna, we might not have a sortologist. We have no, a I, I number of if different. If you have one, I'd be, I'd be interested in. We have a it. number of specialists, though, so it kind of okay. depends on location. Okay. But uh, but yeah. You might refer me outside of. KP. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I, I rely on them a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to spend some time with you about the uh, neighbor island thing yes. and uh, you know, telemedicine in general, because if when, whenever you think about medicine and technology, you think about telemedicine and dealing with this problem of people from the neighbor islands. You know, so many stories about how helicopters have to go out there. In fact, I think HMSA has some kind of program where they helicopter, helicopter people you know, back and forth or put them on a plane mm -hmm. to come for a visit. Mm -hmm. But if, if I can make a telephonic visit with you, I may be able to avoid that. Yes. You know, the cost of that airplane mm -hmm. or helicopter. Uh, I, I, and, and furthermore, if I'm able to send you a picture of my rash or whatever it is on my skin, uh, then you can give me a di hopefully a diagnosis very quickly and a course of action very quickly. So those cases are also excluded from the cases for which I would have to fly in from a neighbor yeah. island. Yeah, and so, you know, it, it depends really on the what condition it is, sure. right? Yeah, as far as being flown over. But how far do you think we're going to go with that? I mean, skin is easy. Yeah. Uh, it's easier than mm -hmm. the internal for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, for example, I could go get a, you could tell me what kind of blood test to get. Yes. And yeah. I go locally down the block for yeah. the blood test. Now you're yeah. going to look at the blood test mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we can figure yes. out what might be cooking over yeah. there. I think the thing to remember though is relationships are important. And so I think it's hard as a specialist to only do things remotely, right? I, I think the relationship is very important depending on what it is. So, you know, teledermatology is really exciting um, because it kind of gives us a level of how bad is it, how quickly does it need to be taken care of. But um, under all of that, though, is that individuality of the person that requires a touch, a relationship, right? And so it's really using technology to enhance that and to be able to give access to remote areas, even on Oahu, as well as being neighbor island to the same quality care. But it's not going to take the place of a relationship. No, at right? the end of the day, mm -hmm. you have to ideate your doctor because mm -hmm. your doctor is your, your body's guide. best friend. Your advocate, your, your advocate, your guide, your interpreter, yes. you know, as, as well as the clinician. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to, uh, we really want to personalize the care. It, it, it's not. Let's talk about the relationship of, mm -hmm. the, of the patient and the doctor. You know, I would say in my lifetime, the relationship of the patient and the doctor has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. I told you about when I was a kid anyway, the doctor was in my apartment building. Oh. And everybody in the apartment building and for blocks around went to see this guy. And they paid him in cash, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't expensive. Okay. <laughs> and he was a friend of everybody's yeah. family, you know. And it was a relationship. It was, mm -hmm. it was, he was yeah. a... You know, he was kind okay. of a ten foot tall kind of guy. It's not like he was your buddy. Yeah. I'm not your pal. I'm your doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. But you could trust him. Yes, he was. He was the. He handed down the medicine. Yeah. 
Um, so now it's, you know, now you, mm -hmm. we talked about how everybody collaborates. Well, you have a lot of people involved in that picture and you want to find a friend, but sometimes, I don't know, you know, maybe Kaiser is different, but sometimes you find you're dealing with Medicare mm -hmm. as a bureaucratic establishment mm -hmm. because it passes through the doctor and all those forms that the poor doctor is buried with, you know, affect his way of relating to mm -hmm. you. And I think modern medical patient relationships are, have been made different by that. Mm -hmm. Pity the poor doctor. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very em empathetic <laughs> with the doctors. But so the question is, uh, you know, what is the kind of relationship you would seek to achieve, you and at Kaiser, today with your patient? Can you describe it to me? What is it like? What, how do I see you? How do you see me? Well, I, I hope as a partner in health, I think, um, you know, going through the medical training, you have a certain amount of knowledge, right? Um, and so it's kind of personalizing that to where the member is and what health problems they're dealing with at that point in time, or even to stay healthy where they are at that time. It's really um, personalizing it and, and meeting them um, to work on whatever health goals are right for them at that time. Right? Do you remember all that? I mean, with all the patients you have to see? Oh, you know, I, I use my peripheral brain. I put it in the electronic medical record. Um, I, I like to leave it there, yeah. So, oh, I've always wanted to ask a doctor this. Mm -hmm. So, okay, <clears throat> we have this, uh, you know, online kind of um, uh, appointment, mm -hmm. and I talk to you, and I tell you mm -hmm. my source is hurting me. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, next time we talk again, uh, you want a status report, and you have some okay. thoughts of me. Have you actually, during the interim, uh -huh. are you going to, you're going to go to my medical records, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to make sure you're talking about me. Yes. And oh, with yeah, my, yeah. With all my history and drugs yes. and whatnot. Um, but are you going to do research, too? I go back to the Japsum, your Japsum notes. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go to some medical book? I, you know, a, a Merck manual, a, what do you call it, PDR, PD, PDR? Yeah, so uh, um, I no longer have a PDR. <laughs> <laughs> they try to mail it to me once, and I promptly return it. You know, at Kaiser, I love the resources we have available to us electronically. We actually have a ton of resources. We have everything from a clinical library that's local, clinical library that's national. We have access to clinical libraries from other regions. So if I wanted to uh, sickle cell, I never see sickle cell anymore like I did at Yale. I have access. We have um, a whole slew of resources at our fingertips, so I don't have to go to my jab some notes. I just threw them all out. I said, you know, this <laughs> Your is... Your secret is safe with yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I, I can't rely on this anymore. It's, it's outdated. Yeah. It's outdated. It's not the uh, right level of care. So it, it's all available to me. Actually, it's um, integrated into our electronic medical record. And I, it's, to me, that's uh, amazing, and I'm so grateful to have that. Um, you, you, know, know, you know, when I graduated from law school, I, I was under the misap misunderstanding that the law, as they taught it to me, was the law. Mm. And six months later, you know, I'm practicing, and somebody said, oh, you mean that, that provision? Well, they threw that out. Oh, that wow. provision. They changed that. Oh, and that provision. You know, they completely changed that and turned it around. I said, how could they do that to me? I went and spent all that time and money studying the stuff, and now they changed it six months later? It must be more than that, more the case like that in medicine, because it's so fast. It's not only technology, it's healthcare. Yeah. Healthcare is like technology on, on steroids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. how do you keep up? Yeah, I, I, um, we, uh, within Kaiser, it's, um, they really want us to keep up to date. So they actually are quite generous with education leave for us to go and learn whatever it is that we need to get better. Within our day-to-day, -day, they incorporate um, learnings for us, um, whether it's meeting with everybody in a group setting. We have these HPMG Grand Rounds that are um, very informative, but also what, what is HPMG, HPMG Grand, Grand Rounds. Round. So they're Grand That's Rounds. That's something I saw on yeah. television. Once. Yeah. yeah. So in, in medicine, um, you know, Grand Rounds are when a specialist would come and give you the latest around such and such disease or treatment, the latest evidence. Is it a speech or a tour? It is, um, it is supposed to be a lecture, but these HPMG at Grand Rounds are a lot more. They're very engaging, very interactive, and within it they create tools for us to use so that when we leave that session, 
we know how to apply it. And they sometimes even create processes or teams to support us to provide care better. So these are a part of our work week. So it's um, within KP, I really appreciate all the continuous education we get to stay up to date. Yeah, well, it's really important. Very and what, important. I, what I like from what you said is the notion that um, KP is a national organization. Maybe it's international, too. I don't know. National. National. Okay. For now. Stay, for now. Stay that way for now. <laughs> And, and so you have all over the country, and you may have some really fantastic experts, like uh, the guy I met, Schneider, yeah. who, who does uh, all Schneider. that vein work yeah. and the surgery around the veins and stents, and, and it's really very advanced. Yep, Not very only memory. the equipment, but the surgical techniques, mm -hmm. you know. And that was special for Kaiser. So maybe there'd be somebody in Milwaukee, I keep mm -hmm. thinking of Milwaukee. I don't know if you have a, a facility in Milwaukee, but somebody in Milwaukee yeah. who specializes in Zorches. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and so if my Zorch case comes in for you, you can get on the phone with this guy in Milwaukee and learn everything you need to know about we can. Zorches. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, but, I, you know, I, I don't think at KP we limit ourselves to within KP either for medical knowledge. We really want whatever is the best, and we stay up to date, even if it's not within KP. But you're right, within KP there is a ton. Um, I just found out, kind of preparing for this, we have a, even a radio show that goes on. And so I was listening to one from a Georgia psychiatrist. You mean among the national? Yeah, there was a talk show from a Georgia psychiatrist, a KP psychiatrist, talking about anxiety in kids. And um, on that website, there was a bunch of resources that I could refer to for my patients. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm discovering things every day that within KP we have available to us to, you know, help our patients and help our families. Last, last point, last question, you know. Um, when I was a kid, again, mm -hmm. that's my frame of reference, uh, there were a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists around. And I talked to one psychiatrist a, a week ago, and I mentioned my own observation is that there are not as many these days, um, and, you know, and that they're, uh, they're, they're sort of trained to deal with emergencies and crises of you know, one kind or another rather than sort of maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The world has come mm -hmm. to see come to see those areas as, as, as um, you know, uh, we don't worry about maintenance, we only worry about crisis. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I'm sad mm -hmm. about that because mm -hmm. when I grew up in New York City mm -hmm. and there were a mm -hmm. lot of psychologists and mm -hmm. psychiatrists who dealt in maintenance and everybody had a psychologist. You know. But I wonder how Kaiser sees that and how you see that. If I come in to mm -hmm. see you and it's mm -hmm. not my Zorch, mm -hmm. but you know, I've been having, I've been having these these, these um, strange feelings yeah. of one kind or another. Yeah. Um, where does that fit in Kaiser? I mean, do you have a, a system that deals with that? Uh, as an internist, you know, mm -hmm. inter the thing about inter internal medicine people is they're responsible for everything. <laughs> they got to see the whole picture and beyond. Primary which care, credit yeah. goes to you for that. <laughs> but what, what happens when there's a, you know, <laughs> yeah. a mental issue? Well, uh, you know, we have um, behavioral health services both integrated within our clinics with therapists, but us, uh, in addition, we have a separate um, behavioral health uh, clinic that uh, multiple that help assist with that. Um, you know, mental health is um, hugely important. Yeah, it's it's a very important part of our care, and so it's both integrated, but as well as um, um, in a separate facility to help um, with. With those conditions. That's important. I mean, because if, yeah, if, it's very if you're going to be comprehensive, that's got to be part of the comprehensive. Oh, yeah, definitely. And mental health, you know, if you find a problem in mental health, there's always a question about whether that's going to get worse, like any other mm -hmm. medical condition. Well, um, we got more to talk about, but not today. <laughs> that's Dr. Haywon Jun uh, Kaiser, an internal medicine doctor and pediatrician, or a combination. That's everything. <laughs> You've got to be doing a lot of reading. Uh, and this is uh, Healthcare Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel, and um, we'll be back in a moment with uh, our next show this afternoon, uh, which will be, oh yes, uh, High Growth with HTDC and Sandy, uh, rather Cindy uh, Matsuki. We'll be right back with that. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank and, you. Uh, I, you know, after we go off the air, I'd like to ask you about this little pain I'm having, right? <laughs> Let me get my camera. <laughs>